so much for joining us. Let's talk about priority for a second term. Uh, do you have anything left that you need to accomplish in terms of campaign promises? And what are your priorities for a second term? Well, we have a lot of things. We've done, I think, more than anybody in three years. And now, you know, with regulation, tax cuts, and so many other things, we've rebuilt our military. Two and a half trillion dollars on the military, but we have a military like we have never had before. Uh, we're going to be doing a middle class tax cut, a very big one. We're going to be doing that. We have to win the House, and I think we can. I think we will win the House. I think the whole hoax with the impeachment hoax, I call it, I think that it really helps us in terms of the House. Was so that a, we'll be a, doing a tax that. cut for the middle class, or do you just want to make that permanent? No, no. I'm going to make a tax cut, and we're going to probably make the other permanent. It's got a long way to go, in all fairness, but we're going to make that permanent for the middle class. So we'll be doing that. We'll be announcing it over the next 90 days. Uh, that's to me very important. We have great health care initiatives coming up. We've done well with health care anyway. We got rid of the individual mandate, and if you look at that, that was the big thing with Obamacare. That was the end of Obamacare. But that was a thing that people couldn't do. They couldn't afford it. They didn't want it. They were forced to pay a number and then not get health care. So we got rid of that. But we've done really well with health care, but we're coming up with a plan that's going to be fantastic. What about um, in, in terms of uh, your trades uh, initiatives? You met with the European Commission right. president. What do you want Europe to do, buy more agriculture, in order for you to hold back on additional tariffs? So we, uh, we've made some great trade deals. The China deal is amazing, and we'll be starting phase two very soon. And uh, as you know, I left the tariffs larger, 25 percent tariffs. On because it's good to negotiate for the phase two, and they want to start phase two right away, and so do I. So we'll start that right away. Uh, USMCA, great. We made the $40 billion deal with Japan also. We said we won't do the tariffs, but we'll do 40, and Japan is a tremendous buyer now. South Korea. But we find, I find that the European Union is tougher to deal with than anybody. They've taken advantage of our country for many, many years. It was actually formed for the purpose of taking advantage of the United States, if you really think about it. But they've taken advantage, have been very, very tough to deal with. But for me, they're very easy to deal with. And I told them, I met with the new head, who was very nice, and uh, I dealt with Jean-Claude for a long time. And I didn't want to do China and Europe at the same time. I said, let me finish China first, and when I finish with China, and frankly, Mexico and Canada, as soon as we do that, I'll do Europe. They've been very difficult to deal with, but ultimately it'll be very easy because if we can't make a deal, we'll have to put a 25 percent tariff on the cars, 20 or 25 percent, and I'm sure they're going to make a deal. So I don't want to an alarm. She's going to do it? They have to do it. I mean, they have no choice. They really have no choice. And I say this not as a wise guy or anything else. They've treated us very badly. We've lost $150 billion over a period of many years. We've lost $150 billion with them a year in terms of deficits. They have to do it. It's the right thing to do, and they have to do it. And I did tell her, I said, look, I know we're going to make a deal, but if we don't, we're going to have to tariff your cars and other things coming into the United States. And they want to have like an emergency meeting, and we'll, we'll make a deal. Let me ask you By the way, without that, Zero chance, just so you understand. Zero. But with that, 100 percent. Well, let me say 99 percent. <laughs> let me ask you about 2020. Uh, Bernie is leading in New Hampshire. Uh, Biden is up in Iowa. And then there's Michael Bloomberg. Yeah. Who do you think the uh, Democrat nominee will be? Well, Minnie Mike has spent a fortune. OK, I knew him very well. Uh, he used to like me a lot until I ran for office. And he thought, you know, they all think that uh, they all thought Mike was going to be secretary of state if Hillary won. And that was the deal they supposedly made. And Terry McAuliffe was going to get it, so they sort of gave him false information. But he's spending a lot of money, but it's having no impact. I'm having right now my best poll numbers, as you know, you see them. Because of the impeachment hoax, my poll numbers are the highest they've ever been because it's a phony deal. And the fundraising for the Republican Party is by far the most, I mean, the numbers are bigger than any numbers that we've ever raised. I think they're bigger than, at this point, bigger than any numbers any party has ever raised. And that's because of this phony deal on the impeachment. But at the same time, Bloomberg says he's willing to spend up to $2 billion to take you down. He said he would convict if he was in the Senate. Uh, what kind of an impact does that kind of money have? Well, right now it doesn't have any impact. He's wasting his money. Uh, he's uh, not going to win because he can't. He's a terrible speaker. He can't speak properly, and he's uh, he's not a charismatic guy. Uh, he's got money, 
he'll spend as much money as he can, and he's got a real thing. I mean, he's got some kind of a uh, he's got some kind of a deal going, and he wants to spend a lot. So I'm making a lot of my broadcaster friends wealthy. That's the way I look. But it's had no impact. He's actually gone down in the polls. You look at his recent ones that came out today. Uh, Bloomberg's gone down in the polls. I, I don't know exactly, but I can tell you if you go before I ran for office, take a look at some of his statements. I'd love to give them to you. He said the best things about me. He said great things about me. And I've helped him in the past, uh, but he seems to have a problem, and that's okay. I think that the other ones, uh, Crazy Bernie, I don't know, maybe he's really surging. He really is. Elizabeth Warren seems to be going in the other way. And Joe Biden doesn't seem to be doing too well from the standpoint he can't. It'll be very interesting to see whether or not he makes it. Hillary Clinton about Bernie. She said no one likes him. No one wants to work with him. He gets nothing done. Pelosi has him, of course, in, in jury duty at the impeachment trial. Are they colluding against Bernie again? Well, they are. They're really trying to take it away from him again. I mean, when Hillary says nobody likes him, nobody likes her. That's why she lost. I mean, nobody liked her. She had every advantage. She had this big machine behind her. She had the Obama. She had that. She had everybody behind, and and it wasn't even close. You look at 306 to 223. Uh, she uh, she's the one that people don't like. I mean, I think if you, if I had my choice in terms of personality, I might take him over her, but I probably would take neither. On the onto the impeachment. And, and Biden's going to be interesting because he can't string together a sentence. And if he makes it, if he makes it. You know, he seems to have a little bit of an edge right now, but it's it's rapidly disappearing. Bernie is surging. There's no question about it. And Bernie seems to be the one the party wants. But my attitude is whoever it is, it is. Mr. President, I couldn't believe that the impeachment was still going on as we were getting here this Crazy. morning. Um, your critics are up to the same. They say that uh, Pat Cipollone is now a material witness. They're accusing McConnell of colluding with you to cover a crime. Are you concerned about getting a fair trial? These people are crazy. They have gone totally nuts. McConnell, they talk, they say things about him with Russia. The, Jill Stein, now I don't know Jill Stein, Green Party. They said Jill Stein is an agent of Russia. Then they said Tulsi Gabbard. I don't know her, but I know one thing. She's not an agent of Russia, but they said she was an agent of Russia. That's what they said about me. These people are crazy. They've gone nuts, and they've gone far left. Uh, Nancy is a woman who, I call her nervous Nancy for a reason. She doesn't know what the hell's happening. She's lost her party. She didn't want to do this. And we're doing very well. Look, you know, I always say, very simple, read the transcripts. And then on top of reading the transcripts, speak to the president of Ukraine or the foreign minister who say nothing happened. Absolutely nothing so happened. Remember this. They got their money and they got it early. But I want to make sure also, in addition to collusion, there's something else I'm always stressing. Why isn't Germany and France and UK and all these other countries in Europe that are much more affected than us, why aren't they paying something? We're always like the fools. So I asked that question. No, so you got them to pay more. I got them to, well, you look at what I did with NATO, $530 billion more, not total, more. My biggest fan is Stoltenberg, Secretary General. He'll head be of, on the show. I mean, you know, you should put him on the show. What, what do you think is the best outcome here? Is the best outcome a quick dismissal, or is the best outcome to get the witnesses, get the, the vote for witnesses, and then be acquitted by the American people? I guess acquittal fairly quickly. These people are liars. They're horrible. I watched this guy, Shifty Schiff. I watched him for a little while. So yesterday I had meetings all over the place. But in between meetings, I get to see, and I watch his lies. I, I watch where they have actually played a rerun, which they shouldn't even do. It was so bad. Well, he goes before Congress and he makes a statement that I made, and it was a total fraud. I never made it. He made it up. That's why I released the conversation, because if I didn't release it, people would have said that I made the statement that he made. This guy's a fraud. He's a corrupt politician. So I think, you know, I'm pretty much going to leave that to the senators. I have a lot of respect for him. I can say this. The Republican Party has never been so unified. You've seen that, too. 195 or 196 to nothing in the House, twice. Uh, three Democrats came to our side, and I think we're going to have some people come to our side. No, it's a hoax. It's a terrible thing, and it's a hoax. And it's been going on from the get-go. It's been going on from before I ran. But it's not ending. Al Green said, look, if we don't get him this time, we'll keep going. Maxine Waters said the same thing. We'll try to impeach him again. How are you going to deal with this for the rest of your presidency that they're constantly trying to take you down? So 
I think most people are now agreeing nobody's done so much as I've done in the first three years of the presidency. I don't think I, when you look at regulations, tax cuts, rebuilding the military, taking care of the vets, uh, right to try, right to try is such a big deal. So many things I've done. Nobody's done anything like it. You look at what we're doing on the environment. We're doing great on the environment. You know, people don't want to talk about it. But nobody's done what we've done. Uh, and that's despite having this constant harangue. I saw Maxine Waters, what she said. I saw this guy, Green. He said, we have to impeach him because we can't beat him. He said, we can't beat him. We have to impeach him. It's the only way we're going to win. Can you imagine? This is what I have. This is what I have. But you know what? We'll just keep it going. You have a 51-vote threshold in the Senate. Do you think there are four Republicans in the Senate that will vote for witnesses? I, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, I hope that they realize it's a hoax. Uh, I think it would be very bad for the Republican Party if we lost that great unity that we have right now. Uh, some of them are running, and I think it would be very bad for them. But I want them to do what they feel is best in their own heart. But nothing was done wrong. I think you know that better than anybody. I, I want to thank you, because you have been so incredible in this issue. And I want to thank you. I know it's not appropriate to thank you. You're a great journalist and you're a great reporter. And congratulations thank on you. six more years. They did a thank fantastic. You. I don't care what they pay you. They, get, been, they made a good deal. We've been seeking truth, and that's no, why the show you, is you doing been, so well. You have been so fantastic. Because people know that I've been honest about this. And I appreciate it's because of it. this issue. Yeah. Um, there is some question about this China deal. Some people feel like it doesn't have enough teeth, that, you know, you're not going to be able to get China to stop stealing intellectual property. But here's it's their what I culture. Do. Okay, you ready? We have tremendous policing. We have a policing aspect to this deal that's the strongest anybody's ever had. If that happens, I'll terminate the deal. If that happens, I'll charge tremendous tariffs. We have tremendous policing action. So it could happen. I mean, I'm not a baby. I understand China has a reputation for being cute. But I have a great relationship with President Xi. I don't think it's going to happen. I think already uh, we've seen a difference on the fentanyl. I said, you got, it's not in the deal, but I said, you got to do me a favor. You got to stop the fentanyl. And now they're putting criminal penalties on people that deal in fentanyl, which they never had before, and it's having a big impact. Uh, if, it, if this happens, what you're saying could happen, of course it can always happen, uh, we can terminate or we can put tremendous tariffs on. What about investing in Chinese companies? There's this proposal uh, for the thrift fund, $500 billion of 401k money for military, past and present. They want 10% of that, $50 billion, to mimic the MSCI index, the Morgan Stanley World Index. There's Chinese companies in there. Some of them are sanctioned. Some of those companies are making weaponry for the Chinese government. Do we want our military to be investing in Chinese companies no. that are making bombs no. and et cetera for the Chinese military? No, and I've been very tough on Huawei. Nobody's been tougher on Huawei than I have. I've called 10 countries and gotten them not to buy it. But, you know, at the same time, getting along with China is a good thing. You know, I can do something where nobody's ever going to do anything with China. Getting along is a good thing. Now, there was a real chance that we couldn't have made a deal. You know, they're having the worst year they've had in 67 years, right? That's because of me. I don't want that to happen. But getting along with China is a great thing. And I like that. I think it's wonderful. So if the people on Wall Street, the people in the military, if they have problems, they're going to come and see me. They haven't come and seen me. But if they start having problems with that, we'll stop doing it. But having investments in China, that's not bad. Letting them invest in our country is good. But we have to be careful of the, the military aspect of it, because they're very much into the military, as you possibly know. What about this uh, coronavirus? What can you tell us about this? How worried should we be? And what is the administration doing in terms of protecting our passengers at the airport? Yeah. We have one person uh, right now, as you know, and quarantined. And uh, we got lucky, actually. But uh, we're in great shape. We have uh, CDC did a fantastic job. Immediately got the person. And we think we're in good shape. And I think China's in good shape, too, by the way. So do you think that people should be worried when they're no, traveling in the airport? Not at all. I don't think they should be worried. This is one person out of tens of millions of people that travel. And we just announced it yesterday. And uh, it's all taken care of. And China's working very hard on the problem. We spoke about it, and China's working very hard on the problem. Nancy Pelosi is also trying to uh, criticize and take down A.G. Barr. Um, A.G. Barr says that there are some things that were done in the investigation that are not included in the Horowitz report. He's looking at Brennan. He's looking at other Obama officials. How far up the line do you think this went, that they framed you, tried to target your campaign during the election? I think it went right to the top. And 
And I think that what they did is they spied on my election. What they did is so illegal, like in history there's never been anything like this. Uh, they tried to defeat me before I got elected, and then the insurance policy kicked in. You remember the famous insurance policy? If he wins, we'll go get him here. And that happened. That happened. There has never been a thing like this. If this were reversed, and this was Obama, President Obama, where this happened to, people would be in jail right now for 50-year terms and 100-year terms. Or they, who knows? But if this were President Obama instead of President Trump, if this were the other side, people would have long ago been in jail. Uh, I will tell you, we have a great attorney general. He's highly respected. He's a highly ethical man. He's doing a fantastic job. Let's see how it all comes out. Nancy Pelosi is a disgrace to our country, and she ought to spend more time trying to look at San Francisco, which is going to hell. You look at what's going on in San Francisco. People don't even recognize it as a city. This was one of our most beautiful places. It's with all of the needles and all of the everything else that we're not going to talk about. We were just there. And by the way, it's washing into the ocean. And they have beaches, and it washes into the ocean, and our EPA is fining them tens of billions of dollars. What's happened to San Francisco is a disgrace, what, and that's where she is. What about New York? I mean, how do you feel about this new bail reform where three-quarters of all inmates yeah, are being released? I think it's Governor crazy. Governor Cuomo and, and de Blasio put this into I think effect. It's crazy. Neighborhoods don't even know. I think it's crazy, and I think Virginia is uh, crazy. They want to take away the guns in Virginia. You have a, a governor that's... Uh, I just can't believe it. But Virginia is very much in play. I think we're going to win the state of Virginia. They uh, want to take everyone's gun away in Virginia. You can't do it. You can't do it. People need that for safety. They need it for hunting and other things. But many people need it for safety. They need it for security. Yeah. They're playing with our Second Amendment. Frankly, they'd get rid of it. I watched him on an interview. He would get rid of the Second Amendment if it was up to him. And you have many Democrats saying the same thing. They're saying it quietly, but if they win these elections, they're going to try and get rid of the Second Amendment. It will never happen as long as I'm here. What about Iran? There's a lawmaker there now who's offering a reward for somebody to come and take you down. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, I wanted to ask you about Iran selling 70 percent of its oil and gas to China. How does China get away with that when you've got sanctions on, on companies and countries doing business with Iran? I talked to China about it the other day when we did the signing, and they're going to be uh, changing very much. Don't forget, we had a very tough patch with China. You know it better than anybody. You know, you'd say some days the deal's going to happen. Some day I'd walk out of a lot. I walked out of a lot of meetings. They walked out also. We had a deal that was almost finished. They walked out. This deal is better. This deal is a portion of that deal, but a very big portion. You know, we cover intellectual property, uh, finance. We cover things nobody thought. They thought it was all a farm deal. It's not. This is a massive deal, phase one. Now we'll go to phase two. But, uh, no, China's... Uh, working with us very nicely. Do you worry that the technology companies are going to cheat in the election? As Ted Cruz said this on my show the other day, and he said that he's watching some of these big companies that have the ability to put their finger on the scale by shadow banning and all yeah, of this other I stuff. Yeah, I do. I do, and I see it. And Mark Zuckerberg was in the White House two weeks ago, and he said, you're number one on Facebook. I said, thank you very much. I said, who's number two? He said, Modi. Modi of India and uh, Prime Minister, I said, uh, well, he has one and a half million people. We have 350. But uh, so we can also use it in a sense. But no, I see it. I see the numbers where Facebook and Google and Twitter, you know, Twitter, I mean, Twitter's been very good for me, but I see what's going on. No, we're very concerned about it. But I was concerned about it when I ran three years ago, too, and we won. You know, we won, and we won easily. Mr. President, co congratulations and happy anniversary. Thank you very much. How beautiful those nice. pictures are on Instagram of you and right. the First Lady. Uh, she's done a great job. She's, uh, she's a great First Lady. How has it been living in the White House with your bride these last three I years? think it's been great. I mean, it's been uh, constant haranguing and constant witch hunts. So I've, I've had a witch from before, I believe, from before I came down on the escalator with then our future first lady. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, hey, look, I love it. You know why I love it? Because we've done so much. You have a Super Bowl pick? So much. Uh, I, I don't really. Okay. I really don't. <laughs> you I can't take a side. They're a little bit of a surprise, but I think for me to take a you know, side would be a little bit tough. But, but it's going to be a great game. I hope it's a great game. Mr. President, thank you. Thank you very much.